Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today's topic of discussion is the Eaton EasySoft programming software. Our objective is to familiarize ourselves with the Eaton EasySoft programming software. We'll learn to navigate the software environment, enter a basic ladder logic program, simulate the program, and transfer it to a device and monitor its operation. Note, this lecture is not intended to be a thorough review nor an endorsement of the Easy Intelligent Relay family, but rather serves to familiarize the viewer with just one of the many inexpensive basic programmable logic controllers and programming software options commercially available. Recall in the example PLC, Eat an Easy Intelligent Relay lecture, available at the Big Bad Tech channel, we familiarized ourselves with a representative example of an inexpensive basic programmable logic controller, the Eaton Easy 512 DCR Intelligent Relay. During the course of that lecture, we programmed the device using the ridiculously small dedicated buttons and LCD screen on the front panel and learned the hard way that this is a time-consuming and frustrating task. Today, we'll learn to use the Eaton Easy Soft Programming software that makes the manual entry method feel hopelessly ponderous in comparison. Eaton offers a demonstration version of this software for free on their website. The demo version does not allow a technician to communicate or download a program to an actual device, however it does allow an individual to build and simulate a program. If you've already got a copy of EasySoft available or are capable of downloading the demo version, by all means, do so, fire it up, and follow along. The EasySoft programming software is proprietary software used to program devices in the Eaton Easy Intelligent Relay or multifunction display family only. Other manufacturers or other devices not in these families necessitate the use of different software. While proprietary in nature and limited to a handful of devices, most of the programming software features as presented in this lecture are universal in nature and only subtle differences exist between different programming environments. Ultimately, well-designed PLC programming software will allow a user to do four things. Write, save, edit, and manage programs, simulate programs, transfer programs to a device, and monitor a device running a program. Not only does the use of programming software like EasySoft greatly simplify the program entry and editing process, the ability to work on a program offline without stopping the PLC reduces production downtime. Additionally, simulation makes it possible to test and verify functionality before going live with real-world hardware in a production environment. The version of EasySoft I'm using today is version 6.94. Older or updated versions may feature subtle differences. The software environment opens in the project window. The other windows are circuit diagram, simulation, visualization, and communication. These windows are the principal means one uses to navigate the EasySoft programming software environment. In the project window, the left menu has available a number of different devices. Expand the EZ500 family by pressing the plus button. Select the EZ512 DCR or whatever device you're currently using for your project. The lower right window gives a brief synopsis of the EZ512 DCR specifications. Drag and drop the EZ512 DCR icon onto the blank workspace. The software allows to pick which version of the device you're using. In this case, we're using version 01. Press OK. The Device tab allows a user to enter a project name. In the Circuit Diagram window, it allows a user to write, save, edit, and manage programs. Note the blank screen is limited to three contact fields on the left, columns A, C, and E, and one coil field on the right, column G. Columns B, D, and F are reserved for wiring. Additionally, the workspace is limited to 128 horizontal rungs as specified by the chosen hardware. Note the left menu features a selection of available contacts and coils. To add a contact or coil to the program, drag and drop the appropriate selection from the left menu onto the workspace. Here I've dragged an input basic unit onto rung 1, column A. The default operand number is 1 and the default instruction is make. Note the circuit diagram element tab allows a user to select the operand number, enter comments, and toggle between make or break instructions. Note the comment field allows a user to enter device specific information for later referencing or troubleshooting purposes. If you make a mistake, you can always click on the element to select it and change the operand number or delete it entirely. Note within the EasySoft programming software environment, the contacts are designated using the default device format displayed alphanumerically. The default device format symbolizes a make instruction without an overbar. 
whereas a break instruction is designated using an overbar, signifying negation. If this format drives you nuts, you can always change the display to IEC or ANSI CSA mode using these buttons. For this exercise, we'll just use the default device format. Other contacts like timers and counters feature a parameter tab behind the circuit diagram elements tab that allows the user to specify additional operational parameters in advance. We'll discuss these instructions in later lectures. If we change the operand number of the make instruction in rung 1, column A, to I2, then drag another make instruction examining I3 into rung 1, column C, the software is smart enough to realize we want them wired together and inserts a wire in column B. If we place output Q1 in rung 1, column G, the programming software again does the wiring for us. Again, note the circuit diagram element tab allows a user to select the coil number, enter comments for later referencing or troubleshooting purposes, and select the coil function. If you dork up the wiring or if the programming software assumes an incorrect connection, you can always erase the wire using the eraser button and redraw it using the draw connections button. Our program is a series connection of two make instructions examining inputs I2 and I3, yielding a coil output Q1. One can save this program for later editing and reuse. I'm going to call it Demo Program. Note the cross-reference list button produces a handy-to-use chart cataloging all contacts and coils utilized in the program and their rung and column address. This is an extremely handy feature for troubleshooting a larger program. One can also include comments describing the nature of inputs and outputs. Note I've included the comments, normally close momentary contact red push button for input I2, normally open momentary contact green push button for input I3, and first pilot lamp for Q1. In addition to commenting each input and output, the add note button allows comments to be made about individual rungs. These comments are extremely helpful features and recommended work practices as our programs grow in size and complexity. The simulation window allows a means of testing and verifying the functionality of a program before going live with real hardware in a production environment. The simulation workspace shows the status of the program ins and outs as dictated by simulated field input conditions. Before pressing play, open the IR functions on the left menu to modify the electromechanical nature of the simulated field input devices. This utility is the reason why I have a special fondness for the Eaton Easy Soft programming software. A lot of the freely available demo software floating around does not allow a user to modify the electromechanical nature of the simulated field input devices and often restricts a user to normally open devices. Not EasySoft though. This particular programming software allows four different types of simulated field input devices. A simulated field input device could be normally closed momentary contact, normally open momentary contact, normally closed maintain contact, or normally open maintain contact in nature. A momentary contact is symbolized with a straight bar on the operator, whereas a maintain contact is symbolized with angled bars on the operator. I know in the comments section I've indicated the devices attached to inputs I2 and I3 are momentary in nature. However, let's instantiate them as maintained contact devices for the purposes of this simulation, since it's easier for me to get screen capture of the running simulation without having to keep one hand continually on the mouse. Here we've instantiated the simulated field input device attached to input I2 as a normally closed maintain contact button and the simulated field input device attached to input I3 as a normally open maintain contact button. Recall that the electromechanical nature of a field input device has absolutely nothing to do with how that input is logically instantiated in the program. Recall that a make instruction disallows logical continuity when that input experiences logical zero and allows logical continuity when that input experiences logical one. As dictated by the electromechanical normally closed nature of the simulated field input device attached to input I2, the normally closed red push button, input I2 would experience a logical one and the make instruction would allow logical continuity when the simulated field input device is in its deactivated normally closed state. When placed in its activated open state, it would receive a logical zero and disallow logical continuity. In contrast, as dictated by the electromechanical normally open nature of the simulated field input device attached to input I3, the normally open green push button, input I3 would experience a logical zero and disallow logical continuity when the simulated field input device is in its deactivated normally open state. When placed in its activated closed state, it would receive a logical one and allow logical continuity. 
Start thinking now how output Q1 should respond to four different input scenarios. One, when both simulated field input devices are in their deactivated states. Two, when only the normally closed red push button attached to input I2 is actuated. Three, when only the normally open green push button attached to input I3 is actuated. And finally, four, when both buttons are actuated. If you're tracking, you should anticipate output Q1 to be asserted when only the normally open green push button attached to input I3 is actuated. Let's see if the simulation verifies our hypothesis. Expand the input I menu to gain access to the simulated field input switches. Note the schematic symbols of the simulated field input devices change to represent those selected in the IR function menu. Input I2 as a simulated normally closed maintain field input and input 3 as a simulated normally open maintain field input. Press play to begin the simulation. When neither button is actuated, the simulation utility indicates the May construction examining I2 permits logical continuity. However, I3 does not permit logical continuity onto the output, and output coil Q1 is de-energized. You'll note the simulation utility symbolizes logical continuity by highlighting the active portion of a rung in bold red. When only the simulated field input device attached to input I2, the normally closed red push button is actuated, the simulation utility indicates the May construction examining I2 does not permit logical continuity onto the output, and output coil Q1 is de-energized. When only the simulated field input device attached to input I3, the normally open green push button is actuated, the simulation utility indicates the series connection of the May constructions examining both inputs I2 and I3 permit logical continuity onto the output, and output coil Q1 is energized. When both the simulated field input devices are actuated, the simulation utility indicates the May construction examining input I2 does not permit logical continuity onto the output regardless of the status of input I3, and output coil Q1 is de-energized. The simulation utility has thus verified the functionality of our program in response to our intended field input devices. We can now save the program if we haven't done so already and transfer it to a device. To transfer the program to a device, Power up the EZ512 Intelligent Relay. Place it in stop mode and return to the status window. Open the port on the front of the device and install the communications cable and plug the other end into your computer's USB port. Open the communications window and then expand the connection menu. Choose the COM port used by the EZ512 Intelligent Relay using the drop down interface menu. Press the online function to connect the device to the PC. Once connection is established, expand program slash configuration and press PC to device to transfer the program from the PC to the PLC. The EasySoft programming software now writes the contents of the active program onto the device. Note while connection is established to an actual device containing a valid program, one can remotely control and monitor the device's response to real world field input devices. To do so, one must press Run and the Status Display button. The Status Display is this program's means of remotely monitoring an actual system in operation. Note when neither button is actuated, the Remote Monitoring utility indicates the May construction examining I2 permits logical continuity. However, I3 does not permit logical continuity onto the output, and output coil Q1 is de-energized. You'll note the remote monitoring utility symbolizes logical continuity by highlighting the active portion of a rung in bold red. When only the field input device attached to input I2, the normally closed red push button is actuated, the remote monitoring utility indicates the May construction examining I2 does not permit logical continuity onto the output and output coil Q1 is de-energized. When only the field input device attached to input I3, the normally open green push button is actuated, the remote monitoring utility indicates the series connection of the make constructions examining both inputs I2 and I3 permit logical continuity onto the output and output coil Q1 is energized. When both the field input devices are actuated, the remote monitoring utility indicates the make construction examining I2 does not permit logical continuity onto the output regardless of the status of I3 and output coil Q1 is de-energized. This remotely monitored PLC is behaving as anticipated to real-world field input. We can be reasonably certain this program will function as intended and the communication link can be broken by going offline and the PLC placed in service by entering run mode. All right, this about wraps up our brief introduction to the Eaton EasySoft programming software. We familiarized ourselves with the software environment and used the software to write, save, edit, and manage programs, simulate programs, transfer programs to a device, 
and monitor our device running a program. Not only does the use of programming software like EasySoft greatly simplify the program entry and editing process, the ability to work on a program offline without stopping the PLC reduces production downtime. Additionally, simulation makes it possible to test and verify functionality before going live with real-world hardware in a production environment. We'll be making use of this software in later applications exercises to build and test some representative PLC programs. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.